Long ago, in an ancient village of the San Juan people, lived a special and most attractive young couple. The man was aptly named Deer Hunter because, even as a young boy, he was the only one who always returned home from the hunt with game. The girl was called White Corn Maiden, and she created the finest pottery and most beautifully embroidered clothing of any woman. Deer Hunter and White Corn Maiden thoroughly enjoyed each other's company and regularly sought out each other. In time, the couple married, as their parents and other villagers expected. What they did not expect, however, was that the pair would spend so much time with each other. Both slighted their religious obligations. White Corn Maiden neglected her pottery making and embroidery, and Deer Hunter ceased hunting at a time his contribution was necessary to help spare many of the villagers from hunger. The people worried that the gods might become an angry with the couple for not upholding tribal traditions and bring disaster upon them all. At their parents' request, the tribal elders called a council. But the pleas of the council to change their behavior merely drove Deer Hunter and White Corn Maiden even closer together. Suddenly, following a very brief illness, White Corn Maiden died. Deer Hunter was consumed by grief. Refusing to eat or speak, he maintained a vigil by his wife's lifeless body until her burial the next day. For four days, Deer Hunter wandered the village and its outer boundary, hoping to encounter his wife during the short period wherein her soul was expected to drift about the village in the form of a human shape, voice, wind, or dream. Meandering into the fields, Deer Hunter suddenly spotted a small fire at sundown on the fourth day after White Corn Maiden's death. At the same time, their relatives were gathering to perform a ceremony that would release her soul into the spirit world forever. Deer Hunter approached the fire and encountered his wife, still beautiful and preparing herself for her last journey. Unable to accept his wife's death, he wept at her feet and begged her to return to the village before the releasing rite concluded. But White Corn Maiden implored her husband to let her go. Her return to the world of the living would anger the spirits, she warned, and soon she would lose her beauty. Deer Hunter dismissed her pleas. Hearing him pledge his undying love and assurance they would always be together, White Corn Maiden eventually relented. The couple returned to the village to the horrifying stares of their relatives, who were just about to finalize the releasing ceremony. Both they and the village elders begged Deer Hunter to let her go, but he ignored their entreaties. White Corn Maiden started to change profoundly following the couple's return to home. She started to emit an unpleasant odor. Her lovely face grew ashen, and her skin began to dry out. Deer Hunter started to shun her, as White Corn Maiden had predicted. Soon Deer Hunter could be sighted ducking among the houses and running through the fields, with White Corn Maiden chasing closely behind. One morning, a tall, imposing figure, sent from the spirit world, appeared in the small dance court in the village center. He commanded Deer Hunter and White Corn Maiden to come forward and appear before him. They meekly listened as he chastised them for their selfishness and violations of their tribal traditions. He commanded that they would be together for eternity in the sky, a visual reminder to their people how important it was to live and survive according to their traditions. Then he shot Deer Hunter into the sky on a huge arrow, placing him low in the west. White Corn Maiden followed on a second arrow and was set right behind her husband, destined to chase him across the heavens forever.